just gonna smell it a little bit. S smells a little bit limey. Really? Do you smell that? Yeah, yeah. I love the smell. Oh yeah, I yeah, it's yeah. Smell bad. Every time I cut it, right, I, I'm like a little high on the smell. Oh wow, that is it's nice. like a unripe mango yeah, smell really kind of thing, right? Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I'm getting high. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Summer. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How about you? Good. It was kind of hard to find this place, oh, yeah, but you yeah, sent I, good directions. It is, it is, yeah. It is. yeah. But you did great, you did great. So I've heard you got a lot of great plants here. Yes. And if you're up for it, I'd love to do a little tour and maybe see something that's a little bit sure different thing. from what we have in the States. Sure thing. It, it seems like you have a lot of uh, birds here. Yes, though. we do <laughs> love our animals as well. <laughs> They're so adorable. How many do you actually have? Oh, uh, too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've picked up some over the years. <laughs> yes, uh, some of them are rescues actually. Are you? Yeah. Wow, my gosh. Well, you guys have it made here in this little <laughs> forest. Hello. So I guess this is uh, your succulents over here. Mm -hmm. And the cacti. And some caudixes too. Mm -hmm. This one's great. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, this one's a Buffane uh, Disticha. It's from uh, South Africa. And uh, it's got these nice wavy leaves. The regular form comes with uh, leaves that don't have the, the wavy edges. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Does this, this gets pretty large as it well. It does, huh? it does, uh, but very slow. Yeah. Very, very slow. And then does this ever go dormant at all here? So far that I've grown in Singapore, right, because we don't have the four seasons, yeah. uh, it seems that they don't go dormant actually. Huh. They, may, they might slow down the growth a little bit, maybe when it's uh, too hot or something, but it does continue growing all the way. And this one is really beautiful with the, it's, it's very woody actually. Yeah, it, it's a succulent shrub. Uh, it's called uh, Mestoclema tuberosum. And uh, I like it because it looks kind of like a bonsai. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, many people like actually and it's got this nice dark woody stem they have flowers uh, you either get them in like pink purplish pink or yeah. white flowers huh. yeah but very tiny flowers do you know what kind of variety that you have purplish pink or I white know, I, I won't know till they they bloom yeah. yeah wow we just got them in actually well and you have a few of them too, yes we do which is, uh, it's quite nice yep and then let's see what we have over here well i i love the spiral ah here. okay the serious uh, spiralis so yes the growth does spiral upwards as well and it's one of the, the the character traits that people look for actually in some cacti. Can you get this uh, to, to spiral from seed or do you have to take uh, uh, cuttings? Of I think cuttings are much faster. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that there's like, like a little baby over here. Yeah. yeah. Which we can cut out later on. And that will start to spiral then? Yes, when it gets a little bit older. There's another one over here that I think is quite funny. Okay, <laughs> so it's everyone's favorite. Uh, it's called the breast cactus. Uh, it's actually a uh, matillo cactus, uh, but uh, the the strain of this one is a Japanese cultivar, right? And Which it's has so a very long. long. Yes. Name. yes. I I only know like the first four letters. It is a fuku something. <laughs> <laughs> we can never get it right. Yeah. It's just too long. It's better known, I guess, as breast cactus. Yes. I mean, yes. Yes. That's the easiest really name to call it. Really sticks with yeah. you. These are super cool. Are these naturally red or are you kind of... Oh, these are naturally red. Um, naturally red. They are Mamillaria compressa, CV yokan, uh, and they're crested. And as you can see, um, they do look like, like brains, mm -hmm. which people like to call them, or even like corals. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, original growth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. This is the regular growth. The crested part is like a mutation, but it's a natural mutation. And do you actually then, would, would you take this off or would you let it grow? Uh, sometimes like I leave it there because it's just, it looks weird, mm -hmm. right? And people are questioning like, what's this, what's this, yeah. what's this? Uh, this one I've been seeing a lot. This is very, very popular now. It's uh, Stefania erecta. Um, everyone's in love with its nice, cute, round leaves. And I love also that the, look, the little pink edging as yes, well. Yes, yes, that's uh, another ca characteristic that uh, people love. Uh, this is a cordyciform from uh, Thailand, so it's not very, very expensive actually. One of the few 
less expensive codice forms available actually. So, so it's, it's a little bit more available for yes, all health Yes, yes, uh, yes. Very affordable for anyone actually. Yeah. And then how would you take care of this? Because it looks like it wants sunlight. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's actually a vine, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it does need uh, several hours of direct sun. If you don't get enough sun, then this stalk is going to go really, really long before, before you see any leaves. Mm -hmm. So uh, watering is easy. You just water it when uh, the media gets dry. Mm -hmm. Don't overwater it because this Cordex is just full of water and nutrients. It doesn't need that much of it. You don't have the same weather as I do as yeah, a northern yeah, gardener. Yeah, yeah. But would you? I would imagine you'd water a lot less in the winter months. Yes, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. when it's not as sunny. Yeah. And when it gets cold, the plant might uh, slow down its growth. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to cut the stalks off. They do get a little unruly. Yeah. And when you cut them off, right, they sprout out again. So it's, yeah. it's all good. And then you said it's a vining plant. So would you have it like on a trellis or anything? No, we, we don't do that. Okay. We'll, we'll just keep trimming yeah, it off. Trim That's it. what we've been doing all this while. Got it. All right, let's take a look around some more. These are neat. You have some variegated Tradescantia. Yeah, these are Tradescantia Sila Montana variegata. You can see that their leaves are really, really big now and yeah. uh, there aren't many cobwebs or furs on, on the tip of the leaves, right? Yeah. And uh, if you want it to have more of that uh, webbing, you have to grow it like uh, in a brighter area and uh, less water. So it'll shrink. When it shrinks down, you get a uh, little bit more mm. of the web. So this time it's been like, these guys have been newly propagated. They've got the secret fertilizer thing <laughs> in there, right? Yeah. And that's why they're growing out really big but they'll shrink down a little bit. Look at these uh, new leaves though, they're also a little purple on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, those that are a little uh, drier, I guess. The kinda, older leaf, yeah. It kind of reminds me of like a Calicia that's variegated because mm -hmm, of that mm -hmm. purple and yellow, but I've yep. never seen this Tradescantia actually variegated, at least in the States. Yeah, they're not very common there actually. Yeah. And these Durstenias are really lovely. I love the little flowers. And you also have some variegated yeah, versions here. So we have here. the uh, Dostenia Hildebrentii Forma Crispum, and we also have the Dostenia Crispa and Foitida. So this one's a very nice variegated mm -hmm. one, okay. and the colors are very, very bright. Uh, you don't have to do very much uh, with the Dostenias. Um, they're easy to care for. They kind of like water. Uh, and what happens is uh, the flowers actually shoot the seeds out all over the place. So you find baby ones growing from anywhere. Sometimes you find them on the ground or in another pot, actually. Well, I have to say that you're under the bench. Yeah, he's got... ...are, you know, kind of to die for. I mean, look at this begonia and this gynura right here. Yeah. It's just taking over. Sometimes I find the under the bench plants the most interesting. Are more interesting, yeah. You, you stop growing it and then you can always look under the bench, you know, after The ones that you want to grow well on top might not want to do as well. And the exactly. those that you chuck under, right, they're doing greatest, you know. Well, the Durstenia, the fact that it shoots its seeds all mm -hmm. over, kind of reminds me, I brought in a wild cucumber, uh -huh. um, which they're not edible, but they grow native in the uh, northeastern okay. United States. And I brought one in, they look like little prickly cucumbers. Ah, and okay. as soon as they kind of dry out, they shoot they, their oh, seeds. They explode, right? And, and it goes quite far, I yeah, think. it goes far. And I was in my bedroom and all of a sudden I heard, bing, bing, bing. And I was like, what was that? And it was... That was like a claymore mine, nature's claymore yeah, mine. Yeah, exactly. Let's see what's down here. Oh, these are always fun. I've gotten asked a few questions of, about these as well. Okay. So we have got a mix of uh, Albuca spiralis and uh, Albuca namaquensis. So the namaquensis is uh, smaller and it's got slightly thinner and finer leaves. It's a little bit hard to tell the difference actually when I look at them. They have, the, they have bulbs, right? So yes. So you grow them from bulbs. Mm -hmm. do, and do the bulbs um, multiply? So we found that if you pot your Albuca in inappropriate media mm -hmm. or uh, you overwater and it starts to rot, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is uh, they, when they decay, they actually produce little babies that you can pluck out. And if, if you take the entire bulb out and you mm -hmm. peel out the layers like an onion, mm -hmm. each layer could be rooted and it could produ produce babies for you. Wow. So yeah, they're not difficult to propagate. Wow, each layer then. Yeah. Wow, that is incredible. And you always need to give it enough direct sunlight to make the leaves curl. What do you think it is? Why do you think it curls? Is it protecting the leaf in some kind of fashion? I have or? no idea. So, it just looks so, so cute. bizarre, right? yeah. And, and really we tell people horrible. we take them to the uh, hairdressers to get it permed. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has gotten a little perm. 
Well, there you go. Give it more light and then it actually curls. Yes, and it's actually uh, a plant that uh, loves quite a bit of water. Mm -hmm. If you grow it in a lot of sun, then you can water it as often as uh, three times a week. And I guess if you have a well-draining medium, then you're never going to be um, too careless, I yes, suppose. Yes, that's correct. Good tips. There's one down here that I definitely have not seen before, but oh, of course, oh, we have to stop at this Pilea peppermoides because I want to hear if like the craze reached Singapore. Oh yes, it did. Uh, the craze reached Singapore several months ago. Okay. Uh, and were you propagating these prior to the craze or did you kind of get them like once the craze was Yeah, starting? when the craze like reached Singapore and uh, uh, another nursery uh, friend of mine, and yeah. he started importing them from uh, Holland and I bought some over and we started uh, propagating them. And uh, the propagated ones, I feel, look and do so much better mm -hmm. than the imported ones. Well, now they're probably getting accustomed to your That's conditions right. here right. as well. Absolutely right. Let's go down to this one, because this one is so cool. I love the, the helmeted look and the succulent nature. And I've never seen this in the States. So this one's uh, Dyschidia uh, numularifolia. It's sort of a mutation. It came from uh, Thailand. And it's got the name uh, Idea Minubu. So we've got to actually Google and find out what ex that yeah. means exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you can treat them like a regular Dyschidia. It's sort of like a succulent as well. It doesn't need a lot of water. And uh, what we've potted them in is actually just uh, coconut chips as well. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quick draining. It doesn't get too wet. It almost looks like it wants to rhizomatously spread with these roots, you know? Is this, uh, is this something, if you, if you kept on putting it, it would just root right there? Yes, I, it, it would be very easy to root this. You can just do a cutting, and mm -hmm. uh, especially those with roots already, yeah. and just pour them up and, and they'll take off. I've yet to see flowers from it. Yeah, such I'll, a cool one. I'll make sure to take photos and oh, show please, them to you, yeah, please. if they if they do flower. Look at all this plants everywhere. Yeah. Just begonias that's taking over. Best, oh my I goodness. Do. So it seems like you have a nice collection of uh, Astrophytum here. Thank you, yeah. This was uh, a little bit of a craze for me uh, about three or four years ago. Oh, yeah? Um, it's very, very popular right now in uh, Thailand. It's huh. been popular for several years and, and that's why it's kind of driven up the prices. So you have so many different kinds of Astrophytums. You have Astrophytum asterias mm -hmm. and uh, nowadays they come with the V patterns. Mm -hmm. So you call them the V types and they are kind of pricier than the regular ones Interesting. without the Vs. And then over here you have uh, Astrophytum Mirostigma Onzuka. So Onzukas have the Vs as well. Yeah, those are really cool looking. I mean, just the geometry of them. Yes. So they always look best from the top down yeah. rather than from the side. Yeah, but even then looking at it, especially as like a, a grove of Astrophytum yes. looks pretty uh, the more neat. the merrier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they look good in, in clusters like that. And this one's interesting. It's like a very ruddy brown red color as yeah, well. So this is a Eubelmania pectinifera. So this is how it should look. Um, it's got very nice dark black spines. Mm. Uh, this one was a, a seedling that uh, I found uh, next to one of the pots. Mm. And I was so happy about it because it's uh, a double-headed one. It's Siamese so, twin. <laughs> yeah, so it's special. And I ain't gonna ever sell this oh, one. Oh, well, that's good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, it looks fantastic. Thank you. It's really funny because when you look at the plant, it's not tiny, right? Uh -huh. But uh, the flowers are so minute. They're like um, maybe 0 0.5 cm. Wow. It's so tiny, tiny yellow flowers. Yeah. How, what pollinates it, do you know? Um, I flies? haven't been able to pollinate it myself. Yeah. So I would think like the bees, we, we would have to wait for the bees. Yeah. And maybe a few of them blooming at the same time. Yeah. Well, you have a, an awesome collection here, so, so well Thank done. You. Hopefully the craze doesn't end. Oh yeah. Now this one is a real standout right here. Yeah, this one is uh, another Cordyciform. Uh, it's uh, Adenia pereri, and it's sought after because of its leaves. As you can see, the yeah. patterns are just beautiful. Is this a natural variegation? It's not a variegation, actually. This is just how the patterns are. Okay. And uh, it's actually related to um, Passiflora. Hmm. It's under the same umbrella. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. And I, I wonder if the, the leaves are like this because they have chlorophyll in the bottom layers of, uh, and not just in the epidermis. Uh, yes, I would think so, actually. Yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. The caudex is it just... It looks like a big melon or something. It's huge, it looks yeah. like a cantaloupe. Or a turnip. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is one of my favorite ones because of the, the, the very beautiful foliage. Would you have to do this by seed? 
Uh, yes, yeah. this one would have to be seed grown. Uh, yeah. Cordyciforms like that would definitely have to be seed grown. What do the flowers look like for this one? Do you oh, know? Oh, they're tiny. Oh, they're also tiny. <laughs> really tiny. Yeah, oh, man, about like so four hard. or five mm. <laughs> and when they vine, like this one, yeah. when they start oh, vining, yeah. then you'll get the flowers. This. That's so crazy. So you're gonna you're gonna have to cut this off. Yeah, I'll probably cut it off and uh, hope that the the next growth that comes out remains short and, yeah. and it doesn't start vining so much. This is not vining, yeah, however. Yeah, it's not vining. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Because I've been cutting it back like several times already. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. You got to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, they're very cool. Well, it looks like you have some aroids over here. This one just must have been popular for yeah, you. Very, very. So we have uh, the uh, Philodendron uh, Pastazanum and as well as the uh, Plamaniae. And uh, I'd like to point out uh, that the Plamaniae has uh, very oh, nice yeah. wavy petals over here. And that's how you tell it's a Plamaniae. Yeah. Uh, the Mami has it as well, but Mami has uh, some uh, silvery streaks on the leaves, right? right? And I, they're, they're almost like the mame, I feel like, has a thinner leaf. Definitely. Now, these are quite dramatic over here. Yes, they are. They are um, staghorn ferns, uh, also known as uh, platycerium. Well, what we have here is uh, uh, platycerium ridleyi. Uh -huh. uh, as you can see, the fronds are growing upwards. They are also known as like deer horns. Yeah. And the one on the left is actually a hybrid of uh, a platycerium ridleyi and a platycerium coronarium. Mm. And uh, ridleyis are known to be a little bit cranky. Yeah. Like too much water and, and they'll die on you. Oh. So the hybrid's great. Uh, I've had this one for about uh, five, six years maybe, and it came from Thailand. Uh, there, there were hybridizers there. And what they do is they get the spores of the uh, ridleyi and the spores of the coronarium and they just mix it all up and they put it in their germination boxes and yeah. keep the fingers crossed. <laughs> But right now you have uh, straight away like good strains of uh, uh, this hybrid uh, already. Well, you know, I guess like with their keeping the fingers crossed, once they hybridize them, they look like they are very vigorous. They are, they are. And uh, this one looks like a face mask. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. <laughs> really unbelievable. And I really do love the, um, the, uh, the feathery yeah, kind of fronts, nature yeah, of the, the fronds. Yeah. So speaking of ferns and fern allies, you have Quite a bit of like a podium or a puerzia here. Yes, uh, they're one of my favorite plants. Yeah. All right, so we've learned that uh, it's best to change out the potting media for the lycopodiums. Uh, and you're using about, like a barky mix? Yes, we're using a, a, a cocoa chips again. Okay. Uh, we learned this from the Thais, right? And most of these uh, opersia or lycopodiums are actually from Thailand. The media does degrade after a while, so it's best to uh, change it out. Uh, if it's too wet, right, these lycopodiums will actually rot and die. Mm. So they're better kept uh, on the dry side, actually, yeah. because they're epiphytic. And you're dry, but like they probably need a lot of humidity still. They, yeah, uh, yeah, that would help, that would help. And uh, a little bit of shade uh, would do uh, the plant some good as well, not and too much sun. What's interesting, though, about like, I, I mean, I've seen other epiphytes, you know, grow in pots, but you have them growing from the bottom of the yeah. pot as opposed you, you to could the do it both ways actually but yeah. we find that like growing from the bottom seems to work better for the yeah. plants yeah and there's so many hybrids now and uh, some even newly discovered species in uh, southeast asia some of them look like rapunzel's hair yeah 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 tassel ferns like the aussies yeah, call it yeah tassel ferns yeah for sure well, I kind of say we have to save the best for last because or maybe the biggest for last on this side this is insane! So yeah, this was quite a showy specimen. Uh, this wasn't planned at all. Yeah. Uh, we were told that this could be a philodendron speciosum or even a gigantum hybrid. Oh my goodness. It's one of the biggest features we have here. Most people come here and, and they love to take pictures with this one. And you, how long have you been in this nursery? Well, in this location, we've been here for about seven or eight years. Yeah. And uh, this specimen has only been growing here for about three years. Get out of town. Yeah, and it wasn't planned. Uh, it was planted somewhere at the back uh -huh. and it just started climbing up over the bars. And as you know, philodendron grow really, really huge leaves when they start climbing. Yeah. Up a tree would be best. Yeah. But now it's just like, it's humped itself over the, yeah. uh, over the irrigation or the, the pipes here. The thing is that we might have to consider chopping it off oh. someday. Or I have to get more bars to prop it up a little. Yeah. And it's been flowering for quite some time already. Wow, this is so huge. It's really nice to see. You probably use it as a specimen plant then. Yeah, we do, we do. Yeah. And, and people come here and take uh, yeah. photos quite a bit. Wow. 
Well, thank you so much for this tour. You're very I mean, welcome. I, we could spend days in here looking at all of your plants, but I think we picked some of the, the good ones that I haven't at least seen in North I America. believe you did. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Sandy had quite a variety of new species that I hadn't seen growing in other nurseries, so it was a real treat to see his operation firsthand. If you enjoyed this tour, then give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell if you never want to miss a beat. And remember, you could check out what's brewing on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com, and follow my personal journey on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. And if you're keen to dive more deeply into houseplants, then check out the Houseplant Masterclass, the first online audiovisual course covering the soup to nuts on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com. <laughs> we figured this out like after having him for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard, you know. It's like it's slapping me. <laughs>